Amen. Glory to God. I tell you, God is gracious. Amen. Hallelujah. As we're in and into receiving an offering, glory to God. I just want to want to have just a few people share their testimony. And, uh, and I tell you, I know some of you have made a sacrifice to come. I mean, different people from Pittsburgh. These guys came from all the way from Keene, which is a couple hours away. And uh, these guys drove up just for the service from Virginia. How long is that, Lisa? About five and a half hours just to be here. Glory to God. Amen. And you're going to receive in Jesus' name. Amen. I tell you, the Lord Amen. honors us when we really do. We, uh, we put his kingdom first. Amen. Amen. And you know, the healing anointing is, mm, God honors it. Jesus is healing. And if he's yours, then he heals. Just like someone says, does God save? Yeah, he saves because he's a savior. And he's your savior. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. And we're going to enter in and just letting him express his heart to us and in a strong way. So I'm going to ask Carol to come up and share testimony. Then Heather, I'm going to ask you to come up as well for you, David. And there's a guy still on the way. Uh, his wife was healed of cancer from Clearfield. And she got a great report just at Pittsburgh Hospital. He's trying to get here. So amen. Glory to God. My uncle went blind over about two to four weeks. And um his family took him to a major hospital in Pittsburgh, and they said they couldn't help him because they didn't know what was causing it. So I asked Mike to pray for him, and his sight came back the same time frame, two to four weeks. And then my aunt, who was married to my uncle, was diagnosed with pan um, tumors on her pancreas. And um, it was really serious because the doctor that diagnosed her almost had tears in his eyes telling her. And so I asked Mike to pray for her. And um, the next day, she said to a doctor, I don't think I have those tumors anymore. I don't feel the same. Will you do a CAT scan? They said, no, we're not doing a CAT scan. We just did one last week. So she had surgery for nothing the next day because there were no tumors. And uh, I knew the doctor that diagnosed her because we went to the same church at the same time. So I said, did they just look like tumors and they weren't tumors? And he said, oh, no, those were tumors. And the um, surgeon kept on biopsying in a bunch of places because he knew those tumors had to be there and they weren't there. So um, he said, we as doctors see things like this happen, and other doctors don't understand. And then I had Hodgkin's lymphoma in 2009, and I asked Mike to pray for me. He, s he prayed for healing with minimal side effects, and I had chemo radiation, went to Natural Options in Grove City, and um, prayer, and I um, have been cancer-free for nine years and had no side effects from anything. Then I like to talk about my nephew, Ross Dickey. And you can hear his testimony yourself on YouTube. And he was born with a hole in his lung and 70% of his kidneys destroyed. And a lot of people prayed for him. They um, fixed his hole in his lung, but he couldn't breathe on his own. And my brother and his wife were told he had almost no chance of living. And so my brother asked for a miracle, said he would accept whatever happened. And seven days later, he was breathing on his own. And then um, his mother gave him a kidney when he was two years old. But when he was um, six weeks old, the doctors told them that his um, liver was damaged and would either stay the same or get worse. It would not get better, and there was a 40% chance he'd have to have a liver transplant. A month later, they said his liver was normal. And then when he was two months old, they said his brain had not grown at all since he was born, and he could be severely retarded and be in diapers all his life. And what happened was he graduated from college with all A's except for two B's. Well, I want to testify on behalf of my husband. His name is David. He was diagnosed with esophageal cancer, stage four, um, two years ago, this uh, December. And uh, he went in to have esophagectomy done where they take part of your esophagus, and then they put you back together, and then you go on and hope for the best. Well, we came out of a 26-hour surgery. It was supposed to be anywhere from 8 to 10 hours. Ended up being 26 hours. Uh, came out with no stomach. Half his esophagus gone and part of his colon gone. So we were totally, like, shocked because we weren't expecting any of this. And uh, Pastor Mike was, and Kat, Pastor Kathy were with us the whole time, you know, praying us through. And it just did not look good. And I said to Pastor Mike, I said, you know, I'm afraid because I just don't know. You know, we weren't expecting this. And he kept saying, he's going to be fine. He's going to be fine. He said, the Lord said he's going to be fine. So um, we went through a very long battle. Um, he went down to 103 pounds. The doctor said he'll never get past 130. If he's lucky, he'll get to 130 pounds. 
Um, it was a very long, drawn-out battle, but God was with us every step of the way. Every step of the way. Everything that they said that he wouldn't be able to do, he has accomplished. He's off of all medication now, and he's up to 172 pounds, which is supernatural. Um, he still has a little bit of stomach pain, but we're believing in Jesus' name that's going to go. But he's eating normally like us, and everything that he has been through in the last two years has completely, it's gone. So God has really done a supernatural miracle. So what the doctors say is not possible, with God, all things are possible. Amen. Let's do this to start out. Amen. Just if you have your Bible, just hold up. If you don't, just don't say it. Say, this is my Bible. I believe it is God Almighty in written form. And today, it will enter my heart, my mind, my emotions, and my body. Conforming me to the image of Jesus Christ, to his glory and honor. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Go with me to 2 Peter chapter 1. We'll start out verses 3 and 4. Uh, you know, I really believe in my heart that when God comes, we can guarantee that if we'll just enter into childlike faith that Every person in need of healing will be whole tonight. I really believe that. Uh, all of us want to enter into a place where we are walking in freedom. Amen. He whom the sun says free is free indeed. Yeah. You can't walk in freedom in this life if you're fearful of getting cancer, if you have sickness and disease that debilitates you. You can't be fully free. God wants us to be set free. We're here for three purposes tonight. One is for those in need of healing and those you're standing in for to receive healing. That's number one. Second, we're in a place where, praise God, we want you to be able to enter into being vehicles of healing. Amen? Yes. Every one of us in this room, everyone watching by television, God wants you and I, amen, to be able to share the full gospel. Jesus said when you share the gospel in Matthew 10, 7, and 8, go preach saying. Some people say, well, you know, I'll just say when I have to. No, that, that's a religious misconception. You preach saying. The kingdom of heaven's here. And the Bible says you heal the sick. The Bible says you raise the dead. The Bible says you cast out demons. The Bible says you cure the lepers or the cancer patients of our day. God wants you to be able to minister healing uh, in a very confident fashion. Amen. With great expectancy. And lastly, he wants you to be able, just like we shared prior, to be free. To be free. Glory to God. Jesus said, I've come that your joy might be fulfilled. Amen. Glory to God. He wants our joy to be, be full. Amen. Glory to God. The Bible says happy are the people whose God is the Lord. Amen? Amen. So often if you look at people coming out of church, I'm just saying in general, my goodness, I, I wouldn't want to be halfway near that place. Really, it looked like someone gargled with vinegar and just honestly, my gosh, wash their hair with paint or something. Honestly, it just, people don't look excited about Jesus going into it, coming out. But we're to enter into a place, the real church of Jesus. Our joy is to be full. The Bible says that the kingdom of God is an outward, religious, but it's righteousness. It's living right. It's peace, nothing missing, nothing broken. And knowing even when you're going through the storm, you're going to come out the other side. Amen? Amen. And... The Bible says, glory, it's joy in the Holy Spirit. Woo, glory to God. I, I tell you, God wants us to enter into a place that we are as confident about Jesus coming to confirm the message of healing as we are as he is to confirm the message of getting someone saved and having eternal life. And we're looking tonight how they're one and the, the same, okay? So I, I tell you, I have no doubt tonight Really, I have no doubt. I believe every person in this room in need of healing is going to be healed tonight. Amen. I really do. Amen. Glory to God. I can't always say that, but I can say it tonight. Uh, the anointing is just that strong. 
Glory to God. It really is that strong. Glory to God. And uh, I remember just uh, not that long ago, there was a, a woman that, we, Kathy and I started the Crisis Pregnancy Center in 1982. And uh, we had uh, one of our counselors uh, just recently, she was no longer counseling with us. So she had been there from the beginning for a long time. And uh, she was in, uh, I think, UPMC down in uh, Oakland in Pittsburgh. And uh, they didn't give her much hope. She had, uh, they were doing a surgery on her head and then uh, something happened with her brain and she was uh, not doing well and, and, and was giving up to die pretty much. And her daughter, real precious girl, she had actually been a nurse at Children's Hospital in Pittsburgh, had just gotten married, moved out to Arizona and had to come up and be with her mom and she's a good friend of one of our daughters. So uh, the Lord spoke to me to go down there. And, but on my way, I just, there was, a, I don't know if it was a gift of faith or I just knew that she was going to be okay. And so I went in there, and uh, of course, she's all hooked up. To, I mean, machines, and she must have had 100 different things coming out of her head. And uh, real precious, uh, her daughter, uh, Diane, said, you know, can you want? I said, I'll just, if I can just pray with her for a little bit. And uh, I had a vision of just things connecting supernaturally in her brain. And, uh, I, you know, it was just great peace. And I, I spoke to her, you know, she was in a coma for a long, she had been in a coma for like three weeks. Uh, I just spoke to her and just conversed with her like she could hear me. And then I told her daughter, I said, I believe she'll be out and within, a, within two days. And uh, second day, she came right out of the coma like you smacked, just like you snapped your hand. And I was completely well. And uh, but the first thing she said, she said, was Pastor Michael here? And uh, now you think she'd say something with her daughter, but when she talks, see, it's a spiritual thing. You know, obviously she'd, you know, want to be with her daughter more. And she said, yeah, he was here two days ago. She said, I just sensed in my spirit while I was in the coma that he came in and prayed, and, uh, and I knew I was coming out. Amen? Amen. Faith causes you to know. Yes. Amen? Yeah. Not think about it being possible. It's one thing to say all things are possible. That, that doesn't take faith to say that, to be honest with you. It's to say all things are going to happen. Amen? Amen. You played the lottery. I'm not getting into it. But it, it's not, it may be possible if you hit the lot, lottery, but it's not probable. I'm here to tell you it's not just possible. It's probable. And it's going to come to pass. Amen. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. So we need to be excited. We need to be excited. There's going to be miracles tonight. But yeah, can, is it possible to go into a hospital ward and clear that hospital out? It is. But I, so I want to encourage you. God is going to increase your faith. Glory to God. And faith, glory to God. Oh, man. The faith of God is in you. The love of God is in you through the new birth, through the power of the Holy Spirit. And, uh, and that faith is going to come forth tonight. Amen? Amen? All right. So let's look into the Word of God. Let's start in uh, 2 Peter 1, 3 and 4. Hallelujah. Jesus it says this. According as his divine power is given unto us all things. Whoo, everybody say all things. all things. That pertain unto life and godliness through the knowledge of him who has called us to partake of his glory and virtue. Who has called us by and to who his glory and virtue. What's his glory? It's, it's that which he consists of is who he is. Hallelujah. We're called to his glory in virtue to partake of him. Oh, man. That, that, you know, different people come to Jesus for different reasons. Some people come just to get, you know, saved from hell, which it's okay. But that's not the highest level of relationship. We need to come to Jesus for Jesus. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. So the Bible says that we've been, uh, we come to his glory and virtue, whereby are given unto his exceedingly great and precious promises, that's the written word of God, that by these you might be partakers of the divine nature, having escaped the corruption that is the world through lust. Can I tell you something? You don't partake of God, there's going to be a void in your life. And it's going to cause you to enter into lust. It's going to cause you to enter into sexual lust. It's going to cause you to enter into religious lust, meaning you're going to just want to have a position in church to gain identity. It's going to cause you to enter into all kinds of lust. The only thing that's going to free you from lust is partaking of Him. So there's no voids. There are no voids in the spirit realm. 
You're either going to be filled with one thing or another thing. Amen? I don't know about you, but I want to be filled with Jesus. Amen? So God's given us his exceedingly and precious promises that we might partake of his divine nature. Why? Because we live by partaking of him, of his love, of the fruits of the Spirit, of his awesomeness, of, of his glory. You're made to be whole. You're not made to be controlled and be in bondage to anything. You're made to be whole. The reason that sickness is so bad and evil, the Bible calls sickness evil in 2 Chronicles 20. It's not a friend. The literal meaning of sickness from the Hebrew word makab and the Greek word anastosis is the rubbing away of glory. To be in, in a second definition is to be burnt as with fire under destruction. That's the literal meaning of sickness. The rubbing away of glory or to be burned as with fire of evil under destruction. Wow. How can anybody say that's the will of God? I tell you, I grew up with a mother that had spinal bifida and I, from birth as a miracle she gave birth to me, but I, I tell you, it, it just messed me up. I mean, I remember going 110 miles an hour in a 35 mile an hour zone and police chase and Washington Boulevard in Pittsburgh, not caring if I lived or died because hurt people hurt people. Anybody think sick thing is a blessing? Either hasn't been sick, hasn't loved somebody that's sick, or there's something not right. Jesus has made you in a way that you're made to be whole. You're not made to be controlled by sin, weakness, selfishness. You're not made to have been sexually abused, to be domestically abused. You're not made to be sick. And it's as simple as that. We're going to preach tonight in a way that I've never preached before. We're going to be, I'll tell you what, you might not agree with what I say, but when you leave, you'll know what I meant. Amen? Amen? Glory to God. Religion lets you think it might be one way or another. There might be a heaven and there might not be. There might be a hell and there might not be. Jesus might be the only way or he might not be. I want to tell you something. When Jesus taught, everybody knew what he meant. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. All right. So glory to Jesus. Amen. So we've been called to experience his glory and virtue. It's as simple as this. When you love somebody, say, honestly, what's good in you, you want in them. If you have a, ch a child or a grandchild, or, or you know, you're an aunt or an uncle, man, if you love somebody and you've got something good inside of you, you want it for them. I've shared this many times, a guy up in Erie, he had uh, a daughter that needed a kidney. And he was overweight, he was like 330 pounds, something like that. And he had to lose like 100 pounds to qualify to give her his kidney. And he had like six weeks or eight weeks to do it, and he did. And the news reporters came up from Pittsburgh stations, Channel 2, 4, 11, And they said, was it hard to do that? He looked at them like they were just, you know, he said, it was the easiest thing I ever did. I'll never forget. I'm not sure if he was a Christian or not. I'll never forget what he said. He said, if I had to give her both my kidneys, it would not have been difficult. Why? Because God put in him part of his heart into him as a father. Glory to God. Jesus died so his life could become your life. Mm. He became, he not just suffered for you, but he became like you so you could be like him. Amen. And not in some little God, but in a sense relationally to be blessed. Amen. Amen. So let's just look. We're going to look at a bunch. We're going to go quickly until we get to Mark 5, spend a little bit more time on that. We're probably going to teach for about 15, 20 minutes and we're going to pray. Okay. Uh, but we're just going to look at the book of Mark. Now this sounds simple. I'll never forget in... Uh, the, the book about Smith Wigglesworth called The Secret of His Power is by uh, someone that knew him well, who was younger than him, Albert Hibbert, H-I-B-B-E-R-T. It's a great book to get. 
But it was amazing. Uh, Smith Wigglesworth prayed for his uh, brother, Elbert's brother, and he entered into a healing ministry as well. And there was a man there that, that was dying uh, of cancer or something like cancer. And uh, he said, you know what? I just want you to read uh, part of the gospel. I think he had him read some of the, the miracles in the book of Matthew. And when I come back, I believe faith is going to be instilled in you. And we're going to agree together for God to come. And he was miraculously healed. But faith comes through the new birth by the Holy Ghost. And it comes through just looking at Jesus. Through the word. Amen. Through his presence. And through the miraculous. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Uh, we were at a service. What was it? Is it two years ago we prayed for that boy? Israel, I think. Leah, you were there uh, two years ago. We were at a church in Pittsburgh. A, a good church. Leah, you were there, I think. in Pastor Trent's church and. A boy is totally blind, nine years old, and an instant time he's received his sight completely. Amen. God is who he is. Amen. And we see him through the word of God. So let's look at the book of Mark for a while, and let's see what we come up with. All right. So Mark chapter 1, glory to God. Most people believe that Mark, the book of Mark was written by Peter, translated, amen, by Mark. And it, uh, that's why it seems to go, I mean, a lot of action in it. Glory to God. Mark chapter 1, glory to God. We're going to go kind of quick, but I want faith to come. See, I want you to put yourself in the people's place that got healed here. What I want you to see, everything Jesus did was a manifestation of his glory. The Bible says in John chapter 2, when Jesus changed the water into wine, it was the beginning of him manifesting his glory. What I want you to see is this. Your healing is inside of Jesus. And he has a legal right to take what's inside of him by the Holy Ghost and put it in you. Glory to God. Most you know, a good friend of mine, David Hogan, and he, he was uh, up here a while ago. Man's raised almost 400 people from the dead. And uh, he had, uh, I had lunch with him. And then uh, prior, just prior to that, he had prayed for a man with no legs. And he went to the man, I believe, three or four times and uh, shared with them the gospel. And I think the fourth time in front of everybody, uh, well, there's four people in front of the, uh, him. There is uh, the man with no legs and then uh, two other people, pastor and then uh, a lady that uh, brought them in. And uh, the legs appeared. Amen. So I was asking him about that. And he's a tough guy, former hell's angel guy. And uh, so we're having lunch. And I said, well, tell me how he got those legs. And he just looked up. He said, the gospel. Mm-hmm. I said, well, I know it's a gospel. Can you give me a little bit more insight into how he got those legs? He went, The gospel. And I said, I know the gospel. Could you give me some insight on how he got those legs? He said, the gospel. And he threw the Bible down. And I got it. Amen. Glory to God. Amen. So I want to share with you the gospel, some scriptures. All right. Glory to God. So I want you to see right now your healing is inside the heart of God. Right now. And Jesus is here with your healing inside of him. And all we have to do is agree that just like his saving grace came out of him into you by the Holy Ghost and saved you, that his healing grace will come out of him, glory to God, inside of you and heal you. Amen? Someone says that's simple. Amen. Glory to God. But he did all the hard work. Amen? Amen. And we're going to get, amen, let the gospel speak for itself. Amen. All right. It says in... uh, Mark 1, 14 and 15, after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God, saying the time was fulfilled, the kingdom of God is at hand, repent you and believe the gospel. I used to think that the gospel was about the kingdom of God, but this verse says the Bible, the Bible says the gospel is the kingdom of God, meaning that God, the heart of God, the heart of the king reigns in heaven, and the heart of the king now reigns on earth. The devil doesn't rule the earth. Someone said he's a god of this world. That means he's a god of the five sense realm. To those who aren't born again. He's not my god. Amen? Amen. Glory to Jesus. Jesus is Lord. The Bible says he owns a cat on a thousand hills. Amen? We went to the hostels a while ago. Man had a good steak. He had that comment book. I said, amen, Jesus owns the cat on a thousand hills. And you got a good one. Amen? <laughs> Glory to God. Amen? Praise God. Amen. Hallelujah. The devil doesn't own the cattle. Amen. 
Jesus is Lord. Amen. All right. Let's stay in Mark chapter 1. Glory to Jesus. And in verse 21, he went into Capernaum, and there was a man there that had a demon. And he taught them as one that had authority, not as the scribes, the religious people. That's how we're teaching in that, and that's why we're going to get results. And there was in the synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and cried out, saying, Let us alone. What have we have to do with thee, thou Jesus of Nazareth? You come to, have you come to destroy us? I know who you are, the Holy One of God. Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. And the unclean spirit... Uh, Tore him, cried with a loud voice, and came out of him. They were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What is this? What new doctrine is this that with authority commandeth he even the unclean spirits, and they do obey him? Glory to God. Can I tell you something? Unclean spirits are to obey you, and they will obey us tonight. Amen. Glory to God. I don't know why. I sense there's someone now, even with a spirit, anxiety and depression. I tell you, Jesus. Well, rebuke that. You need to take authority over that in Jesus' name. Amen? Glory to God. Jesus, amen, has given us authority. We go to Mark 141. It says, that, that Mark 140, there came a leper to him, beseeching him, kneeling down to him, and saying unto him, if you will, you can make me clean. Jesus moved with compassion. Did not, he did not pray for him. He touched him before he prayed. He put his hand in the midst of the leprosy. Obviously, leprosy is contagious. He should have caught it and died. But he put his hand in the midst of the leprosy to let that leper to know. He wanted him to know he was one with him. See, he didn't want him to get healed. He wanted him to get healed and saved. Amen. Amen? He had his hand right in the middle of that leprosy. And then he said... Leprosy leave in Jesus' name. And the leprosy left. Glory to God. Jesus always spoke to things, yes. knowing the Father would confirm it. Yes. it. You could pray. There's a time to pray, but then there's a time to say. Man, if you're praying when you should be saying, I'll be honest with you, most people die praying if you want the truth. Because they need to be saying when they're praying. There's a time to seek, but then there's a time to speak. Glory to God. Amen? Amen? Jesus is the one that spoke creation into being. He said, light be, and the Holy Ghost confirmed his words. Jesus, when he walked the earth, knew when he spoke, the Holy Ghost would still confirm his words. And now when you speak his word, he's going to confirm your words. Glory to God. Because you, you, you pray, you're speaking in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Mark chapter 2. I'm going to go a little, a little quicker. Mark chapter 2 verse 9. Jesus said, which is easier to heal or to save? Backing up Psalm 103 verse 2. It, it, it's as easy. It's not, it's not more difficult for Jesus to heal than it is to save. Someone says, but salvation's first. Yeah, it is, but it doesn't disclude the other. Man, when you get married to someone, they, they, they might help pay the bills by working, but it doesn't disclude that, that you know, there's a relationship and their, their, their father, there's their husband. Amen? Glory to God. We got a lady that, uh, Pam Grisnick, she's a pharmacist, owns a pharmacy up a few miles away from here in Grove City. She was dying, came to a Bible study we're helping lead. I mean, just, I mean, just weeks to live. I laid my hands on her head. It was like laying hands on a piece of paper. Very last stages of leukemia. Long story short, glory to God, I mean, Jesus came to her. I just said, I told her, I said, is there any sin that you committed that God wouldn't forgive? She said, no. I said, look at Psalm 103. It says there's no sickness that he will not heal. She said, I never saw that. We received that with James 5, 14 and 15. Next day, she ran. It was in the uh, local newspaper, Allied News. She ran, glory to God, in uh, a few miles. And she's healed today. Glory to God. Amen? Amen. Glory to Jesus. Mark chapter 3, hallelujah. Jesus says this in verses 13 and 14. He says, glory to God. 
Verse 14, he ordained 12 that they should be with him. That's first, intimacy. And that he might send them forth to preach and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out devils. You will never see Jesus in any of the great commissions. Mark 16, 15 to 20, Matthew 10, 7 and 8, Luke 10, 19, also Matthew 28, 19. If you look into it, healing always is part of the gospel. Amen in Jesus' name. Thank you. I tell you, Lisa. You came up because you sensed the anointing was going to be here. And it's honored God. It really has. I have no doubt. I, I mean, if I was a bet man, I'd bet a zillion dollars that wholeness is going to come to you. A hundred percent. There's been pain. That's all I know in different areas. Head, neck, shoulders. I had a three disc fusion. My thyroid removed. The mm. list is endless. Lyme's disease. Mm. Heavy metal Jesus. toxicity. Mm. Horrible mm. pain. The anointing is going to go through you because the anointing is your lifeline. And all I know is this. This is going to be released through the Spirit of God in you of glory that no devil, no curse, nothing can stop. And you're going to sense it. You're going to feel it. And uh, mm, Jesus, and you're going to testify of it. And God's going to use you mightily. I, I know you, you love to win souls, but you're going to see people come off cots, come off beds, because you've endured much. And I tell you what, and the Lord says freely, you receive, freely give. So we're just going to go with it. And your daughter, you see your mom go through a lot of pain. And it's hard. It's hard because you love her. Glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus, glory to Jesus. Woo, hallelujah. Just lift up your hands, Lisa, and just say this. Say, Lord Jesus, Lord Jesus, you know I love you. You know I love you. And I receive right now, I receive right now the, anointing the anointing of God, which represents your glory, which represents your glory going, through going through my whole body. From the soles of my feet to the top of my head. Father, right now, in the name of Jesus, we receive woo, who you are. Woo, going through Lisa. In a way that's amazing. And Father, we confess that Jesus gave you a legal right to have your virtue be hers. Mm -hmm. Glory to God. God, she has your heart spiritually. She's got your eyes. Glory to God. Father, now she's got your healing virtue. Ooh, there it is. Right there in Jesus' name. Glory to God. Virtue release right now. Yes, in Jesus' name. And Lord, we receive you going into every, every nook and cranny of her being. <clears throat> every cell, every fiber. Glory to God. And for some reason, I feel like the Lord just, he's, he's going to take the place of that thyroid. And the Lord says, I, even as I am, I will be unto you. Even as I am, even as I am yours. And Father, we just right now thank you in Jesus' name for the glory release through the Holy Ghost. We thank you, Lord Holy Spirit, that even when Jesus spoke, you created the world. When Mary said, be it unto me according to your word, Jesus in an instant time was now in Mary. And we say, Lord Holy Spirit, that even as we spoke, as Jesus has given us words to speak, you confirm those words, and now they're reigning, residing, and they're taking over. Because this is your house. This is your house. And, and I just seen the spirit, Exodus 7. Moses threw down his, Aaron threw down the rod of Moses. It became a snake. All the magicians, the wise men of Pharaoh, mm, the cult leaders, they threw down theirs. They became snakes. Then God's snake destroyed and ate up the snakes of the devil. I hear the Lord saying the anointing, the virtue is eating up even now and has eaten up. Even the curse of the devil in Jesus' name. Ooh, there it is. And it doesn't matter who it came from, great grandma, great grandpa. It doesn't matter. It's eaten up in Jesus' name. And I hear the Lord saying this. 
even as you have lived for him. And you have eaten of him even this night. His virtue has eaten up your enemies from the inside out and the outside in. Well, I'll tell you, you're such good ground. And I hear the Lord saying that the faith of God is released as well. You've been through a lot. Doubt would try to come in, but it doesn't mean nothing because it's the, that's the, the head. Your face of your spirit. Just like those snakes of the enemy, they came from the enemy. Doubt is just, it's nothing compared to your spirit. And I hear the Lord saying, the faith of God is rising up within your spirit. It's taken over your mind as never before. And it's causing you to know, Lisa. That the love of God is so amazing towards you, mm -hmm. he couldn't do anything else. And the Lord says, I've been waiting for this night. Mm -hmm. And the Lord says, you've received, mm -hmm. even as I have revealed my heart to you. Stomach, amen. Dex. Put your hands out. Dex, I tell you, these guys are just, they just got strong faith. They've seen a great miracle with their grandson, had cancer, and now it's whole. And uh, they just have strong faith. I'm going to go first. That, that list you gave me, I hear the Lord saying, I'm dissolving destruction on that list. And, and for some reason, I hear the Lord say, I'm starting with cancer. That person, a, a cancer is being, bro being dissolved. That's the word I got. That list that you, you, you really gave it to the Lord, that the conditions are being dissolved. No matter what they are, from the cancer, from, from, from every, it's being dissolved for his name's sake, to the glory of God. And I hear the Lord saying, he's, he's not only brought you through, He's bringing you in higher and higher to where the devil can't go. He, you, you, he's taking you to such heights like the eagle. He can't go to where you live. Ooh, glory to God. Amen. And that's a word. Amen. God wants you on the high places of the earth so the devil can't go. You know, when Kathy, when you went to Tibet, you know, to minister, they said there was going to come a place in elevation where you needed canisters of air, right? You couldn't just yeah, keep some going. Of us had to have canned yeah. Air. And, and I'll tell you what, the devil's going to need canned air. Amen? Amen. But it's not going to be there. Glory to God. It's not going to be there. Amen. Father, for Dex, we just say, in, whoa, I'll tell you, I, I just see power. Power to your stomach in Jesus' name. Woo. And I'll tell you what, power just went into the stomach. We said, this stomach's perfect. You're going to be able to eat what you want, do what you want, and without pain and be blessed. Nothing irritating you in Jesus' name. For the Lord says, even as I look forward to your fellowship, the Lord says, nothing's going to take away from our fellowship. Nothing. For the Lord says, even as I am who I am, I am in you. Glory to God. And I tell you, the Holy Ghost is still working in that grandson. There's glory manifesting in him even now. There's glory manifesting in him even yes. now. Woo, glory to God. Amen. Leah has such a good heart. She's a good church, a Messianic church in Pittsburgh. Glory to God. Hallelujah. What we believe in. Um, I'd like to get my leg fixed. Um, my knee, mm -hmm. I heard it at Thanksgiving, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. the doctors have run some tests, but they don't actually know mm -hmm. what's wrong with it. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't know how to describe it other than it mm -hmm. isn't as strong as it should be, and Amen. it doesn't really work mm -hmm. all the time. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Mm -hmm. I tell you what, I just sense, I'm going to... Ooh, and all this will be on tape, right, Brad? Amen. I just sense the Lord that he's really pleased in you. Really, he's pleased with you. And he's transforming you. And there's a strength in the Holy Ghost that's manifesting. And the devil would try to send some spirits of infirmity, meaning spirits of weakness. Uh, and, and the knee, it, it, it's going it's to come up just fine. Even, boy, even right now. In, which, which knee is it? Which one, right? Amen. Father, in Jesus' name. Woo! Infirmity, leave. And Father God, we say, laugh of God, be loose. Laugh of God! Laugh of God! Laugh of God! In the name of Jesus, we give you praise. And we say, Leah. Woo! Devil, you're afraid of her in the spirit realm. And we say, you're not afraid of her, but you're away from her in Jesus' name. And Father, in the name of Jesus, even as you're transforming her, we say, Father God, from her head to her foot, Lord God, there is perfection in Jesus' name. And, and I hear the Lord saying, I mean strongly, Woo! I've chosen you to prove the good, the perfect, mm, the acceptable and the perfect will of God. 
That's what he's called you unto. To prove it. To prove it. To look someone in the eye and say, I am proof of the glory of the living God. And those people are going to look in your eyes and get delivered and saved. They're going to look at you like that because that's what God's doing. Amen. How's your knee right now? What do you sense? Amen. What do you sense in Jesus' name? Glory to God. We just receive your glory. Reigning completely. It's good. Hallelujah. Amen. A spring to it. A a a amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank God. God. Father, we thank you thank for God. Leah in that uh, man. That there really is a calling on your life. And you know that. She preaches on the street in Pittsburgh. And glory to God. And uh, I'll tell you what. But the calling's being refined. Amen. It's awesome that you preach on the street and you're willing to go wherever. But I hear the Lord saying, you're not only going to be preaching on the street, you're going to be pouring in oil and wine even first to those who are dying on the Jericho way. You're not going to be preaching as much as pouring in oil and wine, pouring in the oil of the Holy Ghost. And the Lord says, mm, it'll take care of a whole lot. It'll take care of a whole lot. Because when they rise, they will ask you about your Jesus. We just give you praise. Whew, man, I tell you, anointing God's on. Really, the oil and the wine, man. And you know what? It's going to come to the church first. That might seem strange. I know you're out in the street, but it's going to come to the church first. Because there's more people dying from the church than there is on the outside. Amen, amen. Hey, guys, good to see you. Emily. Emily, amen. And is he with you? Yeah. <laughs> You're together. Matt. Matt. Amen, Matt. Amen. Good to see you. Yeah, we're going to back up a little bit. Amen, Emily. Well, I sense Jesus. You just come up here. All right. What are we believing for? What do we have need? Um, I've been having some trouble with my kidney. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Father, I just give you praise for Emily. I thank you for her heart. I thank you for what you're doing in their life. I thank you for drawing her closer to you. Can you just put your hands up if you would? Father, in Jesus' name. I, I tell you, you know, mm, God's your father. You're his child. Glory to God. Uh, do you guys have kids? Do you or not? Or not? You have two boys? Okay. I, and I know you love your kids. I want to tell you something. God sees you as his child like you see your kids as your children. For real. And, and Father, I just thank you in Jesus' name. But this is an attack of the enemy. Mm -hmm. I, I, you know, I'm just going to get, leave in Jesus' name. And Father, right now in its place, we just receive you taking over Emily. In the sense of you just taking her over and just, just ministering your love to her. All fears leaving and gone in Jesus' name. And let her know, Father, every time she says, Jesus, you light up. Mm -hmm. Every time she says, I love you, you light up. And Father, we receive this gone. But more importantly, replaced. Even by just her heart being expressed to you as never before in Jesus' name. Now, can you feel any difference or sense any difference? What do you sense right now? Comfort. <laughs> Comfort. Amen. But there's comfort. I tell you, God's heart is really strong towards you. Yeah. And you're a good mom. Yeah. And I, I tell you what, I just sense the Lord saying, He, God, is a good dad. Mm -hmm. All right? It's as simple Thanks. as that. Yeah. He's not going to let you be harmed. I said, I don't know, I could be wrong, but <clears throat> there may be people in, in your family, in your side, that have experienced some harm. You know what I'm saying? With sickness or whatever. But God's not going to let you be harmed. He's not going to let you be harmed. And Matt, we just receive a blessing to you in the name of Jesus. Glory to God. You look like a warring angel. Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. If I ever saw an angel that was warring, it looked something like you, I think. Amen. Amen. Father, I thank you in Jesus' name for Matt. Look, I just hear the Lord saying he's been working. You, you love the Lord, but he's softening your heart more and more. He's softening. I just hear the Lord saying he's softening your heart to the place where you're just saying, I'm willing to do this. I'm willing to do this, Lord, just because I love you. And, and the Lord just, uh, you have a heart after God. And the Lord says, I place that in you. And the Lord says, but I, he's calling you to deeper and deeper. So don't be afraid of it. For, really, don't be afraid of it. It'll only be for good. It will only be for good. I hear the Lord saying that uh, you've been through some things. I see some rapids like in a river. And uh, there's been, uh, you've gone over a few dams even. You know, they, obviously you didn't get drowned, but you've gone over a few dams. The Lord says, I brought you out. And you know that, and you testify of it. But the Lord said, I didn't bring you out just to bring you out. I brought you out to bring you in. And the Lord says, uh, you may have heard this word before, but I, I tell you, God's going to accentuate it. Peace means nothing missing, nothing broken. Nothing missing means nothing missing. 
Nothing broken means nothing broken. I hear the Lord saying, I realize, I see this, that as you're just thanking Him for, you don't have to figure everything out. The Lord says He will draw the picture. He'll draw the picture. <clears throat> you present the canvas. Amen? Okay? Don't mess it up. All right? <laughs> don't go saying, well, you know, I don't see any big movement in this picture. I, I better help the Lord out. You know what I'm saying? And you know what? You don't even know what color to paint it. You know, with all due respect, glory to God. God is drawing the picture. Ooh, and what he draws will be what comes to pass. There will be nothing missing in the picture. There'll be nothing broken. And there will be nothing taken away. Nothing taken away. Ooh, glory to God. And you have a daughter. Uh, there's a, uh, you have a daughter. What's that? Yeah, there's a glory on her. Even more than she knows. There's glory on her. That devil's tried to just shake her up a little bit. There's glory on her. There really is. I mean, really, she's going to come out in a way where she's going to be, a, she's got leadership. I'll tell you what, there's glory on her. Really, there is glory on that young lady. Glory to God. And for you, remember, I just hear the Lord saying, I'm painting a picture, and it's going to be awesome. And, and woo, rejoice that I'm painting a picture. Just present the canvas every day. Woo, say, Lord, you are creator God. You are my God. You are my Father. I thank you for what you're, man, drawn on this canvas. It's amazing. And I tell you, there's going to be some things on that canvas. You don't even realize what's going to be on there. I see some things in the background are just amazing. Pray real quick over people, okay? I just got some words from different people. Glory to God. I'm going to do it real quick. Amen? Yeah. Glory to God. It's good to see you, man. This guy's a great athlete. <laughs> One of the best three-point shooters I've ever seen. Glory to oh, God yeah. going to that game. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell him I'm going to play him one-on-one. -on -one. He still won't beat me. Amen. Yeah, Amen. Because I got the anointing on me. No, I'm just kidding. Yeah. Glory to God. You got great heart. Really, you got great heart. And I hear the Lord saying, whew, man, I tell you, there's more that God is doing and is going to do in your life than you know. Now, I know your brother's in Bible school, Jordan, right, and God's doing some things and good stuff. I want to hear something. God's doing as strong as a work in you than in him. I mean, I see God taking a few things out. I see God taking some things in. I see God growing you up. I, I see God causing you to enter into destiny one step at a time. But honestly, I sense, I mean the supernatural strength of the living God on you, literally causing you to rise up and be strong to the point that you know in your heart that there's nothing that can bring you down. For the Lord says, I've seen your heart, I've seen your tears, I've seen your desires. And the Lord says, son, I will never let you down. And I'm lifting you up as El Elyon, the God who lifts up high, that you can hold your head up high and say, this is my God. This is what he's done for me. And the Lord says, just watch and see. But the Lord says, you just be obedient to what I speak to you. Well, I'll lead you. But the Lord says, I'm going to give you favor everywhere you go. You're going to be promoted everywhere you go. People are just going to say, I like that guy. There's things I'll share with him to pray that, that I won't share with anybody. Because I know he cares. The Lord says, there is supernatural favor on you like a Joseph, but you're not going to go to things he's gone through. You're under the new covenant. Glory to God. I, I, I'm going to tell you, in the spirit realm, I, I, you know, the Lord says you're Joseph. You're somebody that is going to go from one step to another by the power of the living God in an amazing way. Uh, man, I tell you, in all honesty, it's like, wow. It's just like, right now, there's a holiness. Right? I don't know what you sense, but it's like, wow. No, seriously, it's almost like, Man, I ain't even messing around with the games anymore. I mean, seriously, it's like, well, you win. You know what I'm saying? It's just like, there's, just the, there's the holiness. It's like God saying, I'm his God. And nobody's going to mess with him. Really. Nobody's going to mess with you. Because he is your God. And he's raising you up. Whew, man, really, there's a spirit of holiness around you. Amen. You said the name Cheryl, and yeah. I brought a list of eight, eight people that I deal with with cancer. Amen. Cheryl was number mm. one. Amen. These things are all. Amen. Put your hands out. She, I tell Becky and her husband, I, I, you guys are just such blessings. They have such hearts after God. And uh, she had a list, and number one on the list is Cheryl with cancer. 
And when I gave, when I, I God gave me this, He gave me Cheryl and cancer. And uh, I guarantee you right now, the virtue flow goes to Cheryl. I don't care what stage she's in, because God doesn't care. God, boy, I just see the flow. The flow. Man, I, I'm so excited right now. Lord, you gave that name. You gave, you know, the condition. The oil flow has been loose to her. I guarantee you, when you, next time you see her, there will be a change in her oh, life yeah. in Jesus' name. I guarantee a change. Yes. Significant. You can perceive faith. You can perceive what the Holy Ghost is doing. Amen. The oil flow is going into her. So, Lord, we take this list right now, and we say even as you went into Cheryl, that's why he, she was at the top of the list. Now we say flow, Father God, to the bottom of the list. Go from top to bottom in Jesus' name. And, ooh, and let this couple know. Honestly, I'll tell you, you're going to get, you're not going to regress as you get old. You're going to progress. Really. And that's the truth. Glory to God. Now don't do anything crazy wrestling bears and stuff like I know you could. All right. But amen. All right. But you're going to progress. But I hear the Lord say, you've gone into the thick of things many times where most people wouldn't have gone. And I hear the Lord saying he's honored you more than you know. And he's honoring you now. And it's a special time in your lives where you're going to be honored, even in the context of the miraculous, even as you have a love for others. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Even as you have a love for others. And the Lord said, and nothing is going to come on you to negate it. There is not going to be any harm. For the Lord says, even the, even the glory that went out to Cheryl... It's flowing, I don't know why I see it flowing from the neck up, but it's flowing through you completely in yeah. Jesus' name and to all that you love. To all that you love. You've gone through the fire and now you come out. But guess what? There's no burnt marks on you. There's no smell of smoke. Can I tell you something? It is dangerous to try to impart something to somebody that you, haven't, that you don't have victory in your own life. She has it. She has it. And I hear the Lord saying, it's not only a blessing to your family, it's a blessing to you. You don't have to fear uh, the enemy coming against you. I, I hear the Lord saying, there's a great blessing for you. They're really, I don't know how, but I mean, physically, you're going to, honestly, when most people uh, get to an older age, they're, you're going to look 20 years younger. Really, you're going to look 20 years younger. Glory to God. And I'm not going to ask your age now because I don't want to hit. Amen. But all I know is this, you look young now. But you're going to look, I hear the Lord say, 20 years younger. And I hear the Lord saying, they're going to say, what, what did it? And you're just say, I, I just say, I, I just love Jesus. And I hear the Lord saying, there's a great blessing. And the Lord says, I'm taking care of you financially. Supernaturally, supernatural finances are being loosed in Jesus' name. For the Lord says, your heart, when you pray, is my heart. Don't ever doubt that your heart is my heart. And I have moved greatly. I, I, I've caused people, uh, and all it's not to die that would have died had you not prayed. Had you not been there. But I'm not loosening them just not dying. I'm loosening your seed being great on the earth, says God. Well, I'll tell you, there's gold on you. There's gold on you. Woo, glory to God. Amen, amen, amen. All right. I'm going to run around a little bit, okay? You, well, we you believe in chronic pain. My mom, Ruth, is yeah. in chronic pain, mainly her legs and her knees, and she can't sleep. And yeah, I see her kind of yes. doubled over, almost like yes. just over. And my mom, Ruth. Mom. Ruth. Your mom. Father, we thank you for this mom, for Ruth, and chronic pain. Oh, my. I, honestly, there's some demonic influences there. Leave in the name of Jesus. Now! We say even this second there's a change. Ruth, in the name of Jesus, you're Released! Released! For the Lord says, he didn't send it, but he's taken it away. And the Lord says, it is easy. For the Lord says, you will run and not be weary. You will rest when you want, and it will be sweet. For the Lord says, the time of recompense for you is at hand. And what could not be done, thought not could be done, is now done. I guarantee you, that's done. I guarantee it. Amen. Uh, Lord, Amen. I guarantee it. And Father, we just thank, thank you. you for the blessing on the woman of God. The anointing is going to get stronger and stronger. The devil says, I'm going to throw a wet towel over this because it's already burning. But I tell you, it's going to get out of control. We're hitting, I mean, really, towels and all kind of stuff, hoses are not going to be able to stop it. So I hear the Lord saying, Kim, it's a time like under never before. You're not going to be prideful when you say the, the anointing manifests when I pray. It's not pride when you say, you know what, the demons do leave. It's not pride. 
For the Lord says, whom I can trust, I will entrust. And the Lord says that, uh, oh, my goodness. Woo, my, 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 my. There's just going to be an environment of the Holy Ghost, an environment of the Holy Ghost where you can flow and be who you are. Glory to God. I just hear the Lord saying, do not doubt your identity. All right, glory to God. Father, for Nancy, a woman with a congestive heart failure, she's standing in the gap for, we rebuke in Jesus' name the lies of the enemy. We say where there seems to be death, there is life in Jesus' name to the glory of God. Woo, glory, glory. Glory with the lung and lung cancer. breast cancer. Put your hands up. Can I tell you something? Cancer will leave as quick as anything else. Jesus! I hear the devil say, you know what, I've got this one. I rebuke your lies in Jesus' name. Leave in Jesus' name. Amen. There it is. You don't have it. Jesus has it. You've left in Jesus' name to the glory of God. To the glory of God. Amen. We're going to go quick. Destroy. To the words of my mouth. Demonic principalities. Against me. And I enter in. To the, to the kingdom of God. And I bring people with me. And I say, the kingdom of God, by the blood of Jesus, by the blood of the Son of the King, the of the King is now here. Is now here. Whew, glory. Oh my. Whew, just receive that right now in Jesus' name. Honestly, there's healings, many healings. Like Cheryl, like many healings, many healings. I'll tell you something. Woo, Lisa, and uh, you, honest to goodness, I mean, there, there is a freedom in the Holy Ghost on you. Woo! Man! Glory to God. Warren, I tell you what, holiness of God is still on you. Seriously. My goodness. Glory to God. I, I mean, it's, it's every woman prayed for. The Holy Ghost has come. Man, alive. I just want to, again, the kingdom of God is righteousness through the blood. You're righteous before God. No sin conscious. And you live right. And it's peace. Nothing missing, nothing broken. Knowing you're never going to get, mm, the, the water's never going to get to you. And it's joy in the Holy Ghost. And that joy is your strength. Well, I could go, there's such a good spirit here. Ser really, I mean, the heavens are open. Glory to God. Woo! This is, you're going to walk with open heavens. They're not going to shut as you drive. They're going to open more as you drive to Virginia. They're, they're going to open up more. The heavens are going to open more. Do you know why? Because the evil one cannot touch you. He cannot! When does a crow go up to where an eagle is at in its nest and beat up the eagle? Are you serious? Isn't that nuts? You're the eagle. The enemy's the crow. Let them eat the garbage on the ground. You don't live there. You live in high places. Well, I'll tell you, I'll, just tell somebody, amen, that you are the righteousness of God. And that includes your body being right. Woo! Just tell somebody in Jesus' name. Amen?